Hello, my name is Tom Seiler. I'm a graduate student in Dr. Menender Singh's Cropping Systems Agronomy Lab here at Michigan State University. We're standing out one of our recently harvested soybean trials, and the treatments in this trial consist of three planting dates, two row spacings, and six seeding rates. Today, we're going to pull some plants out of the field to show you the differences in plant architecture between the treatments. We'll also go over some of the early season differences we saw um, in this trial. So there's a lot of research showing that early season soybean planting does improve yields. However, you have to keep in mind that early season, the soil conditions are also, are usually not ideal. We'll be planting into cool and wet soils often. This can lead to soybean injury. So this can be as minor as just some yellowing of the cotyledons, which these plants did recover and the yield reduction is minimum in this situation um, in most cases but it can be extreme if we do experience things like soil crusting after a heavy rainfall those cotyledons can completely break off as those soybeans are emerging and this can lead to complete um, plant death and that can result in spotty stands so what we see here is an area in the field where the stand is not ideal there's a lot of room for weeds to flourish However, in our previous research, we have found that there is a benefit to early season soybean planting. This graph here shows planting date on the x-axis and the relative yield on the y-axis. And what we've seen in the past is that planting early, which we're going to call before or during mid-May, results in our highest yields. After we get past that mid-May planting date and start getting into late May, early June, that's where we start to see a yield reduction. So between mid-May and early June, we have seen about a 0.3 bushel per acre per day reduction in yield. And then after early June, if we get into a late June planting date, then we start seeing a 0.7 bushel per acre per day reduction in yield. So the biggest stressor here is that we want to plant early in the season and try to avoid those unideal conditions. Furthermore, if we do delay soybean planting, we run the risk of early fall frost, which can damage plants as we see here. So that's another thing to consider if you get planting too late in the season. Next, we'll talk about row spacing. So these are two pictures from this year's study, our two separate row spacings. We have 15 inches on the left and 30 inches on the right. The first thing we can notice is the difference in the canopy closure. So the 15 inch canopy is completely closed while the 30 inch you can still see there's about six inches of gap between plants and this is just another angle of that. We can see on the left complete closure and on the right we still have areas where light interception is not maximized. So what we do to measure this, or one of the ways we measure this, is we go out in the field with an app called Canopio and we take a picture of the soybean canopy. The app then converts it into a, a separate file and it calculates the number of green pixels in that image. And from that, they can determine what the percent canopy cover is. So for example, this picture is 58% green pixels, so 58% canopy cover. So we have done that with this study and I put this graph together quick and we can see we have the date of our um, note taking on the x-axis and percent canopy cover on the y-axis. So we have 15 inch row spacing in orange and 30 inch row spacing in blue. The first thing we notice is the separation early in the growing season. What I've done here is put a, a point at 95% canopy cover so that's where we can consider the canopy to be closed. And for the 15 inch row spacing, we can see that it reached canopy closure on July 19th, compared to the 30 inch row spacing, which reached canopy closure on July 30th. So we're seeing about a two week separation. So this is two additional weeks that 15 inch row spacing has to intercept light compared to the 30 inch row spacing. So that's just one of the initial observations we're seeing, a faster canopy closure on the 15 inch row spacing compared to the 30. And then we went out in the field after harvest and we collected some plants. 
and I have some pictures here. So this is three different planting populations. So this will be the last aspect of this study. These are 15 inch row spacings and this is the May planting date. So we have our low, medium, and high seeding rate, 70, 130, and 190,000 seeds per acre. And from this picture, we can see there's a difference in branching pattern, but what we've done is pulled all the branches off, and that gives you a really good idea of how these plants are growing, what their architecture is like. So if we get those main stems out of the way, we can see that the lower seeding rate had a much higher branch number compared to the higher seeding rate. Now we went a step farther, and we took all the pods off of those plants. So we can see that 7,000 seeds per acre that has the most pods. These are just on the branches. Then we can add in our main stem. So here we can see that there are more main stem pods on the higher seeding rates for the most part compared to the lower seeding rates. So then I took all these pods, thrashed them, and then counted the number of seeds per plant. And we can see here at the bottom the total number of seeds. So you can think of this as the yield contribution per plant. 187 for the lower seeding rate, 121 for the mid seeding rate, and 88 for the highest seeding rate. So this gives you an idea of how much each plant is contributing to yield. Just keep in mind that lower seeding rates, there's going to be obviously less of these plants in the field compared to the higher seeding rates. So we have done a study similar to this in the past. This is from 2018 and 2019. We have four planting dates on the x-axis and then our seeding rate on the y-axis. And what I've done is just made the bar graph so that they stop at what we are calling the agronomic optimum seeding rate. So AOSR, which we can also think as optimum yield, and then also the economic optimum seeding rate, so EOSR. We can think of that as the seeding rate that maximizes um, income or net returns. So what we can see from this is earlier in the growing season we were able to use a lower seeding rate. Late April the optimum seeding rate was about 125,000 seeds per acre to optimize yield and around 80,000 to optimize income. However as planting is delayed a higher seeding rate is required to optimize yield and optimize your income. Another thing to keep in mind for the lower seeding rates is the potential for harvest loss. So what we've seen in our previous studies is that lower seeding rates tend to put their pods closer to the ground. So that first reproductive node will be closer to the ground. You can see that in the right picture here. So this potentially can result in yield losses because that combine header is not able to collect all those pods. We can look at the left picture at a higher seed rate and see that there are no pods left on the stubble in this field. In conclusion, we can see how planting date, row spacing, and seeding rate can impact soybean phenology, canopy closure, and architecture. Typically, planting early in the growing season allows for faster canopy closure, which is quickened by a narrow row spacing. However, early season planting can subject seeds to cool, wet soil conditions, which may result in reduced or spotty stands. In addition, plant density will impact the height of the lowest pod on the plant. Low seeding rates tend to produce more branches and have pods closer to the soil surface compared to a higher seeding rate. This can result in harvest loss from pods left on soybean stubble. Finding the optimal planting date, seeding rate, and row spacing for individual fields is important to maximize soybean yield and profitability. For more information on this and other studies in our lab, please visit www.agronomy.msu.edu or email Dr. Singh at msing at msu.edu. Thank you.